Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are now watching the telecast coming to you from Prayer Temple of Love Cathedral, where I, your humble servant, St. Richard A. Smith, is a pastor and organizer. We invite you to be a part of our services. Call a friend, call a neighbor, call a relative, and call somebody and tell them to stay tuned to this telecast right here on this station. You need to glorify him for that. Y'all ought to be grateful that y'all got up. There was a lot of folk didn't get up this morning. Are you glad you got up? Say, so thank you, Jesus. Say, so thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess for some of y'all, it's too close to Halloween. But we need to learn to give God praise all of the time. I rise honoring God. The most high God. The head of my life. My brother Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Pastor Rick, First Lady, ministerial staff, to all of God's saints, I greet you with love. love we thank God for you today. Let me, let me ask you a question. Let me see the hands of you that have purchased some Halloween candy for tomorrow night. Let me see the hands of you that purchased candy for tomorrow night. I want you to go home, take it in the backyard, and bury it. Did you hear me? Go home, take it in your backyard, and bury it. This church does not honor Halloween. Halloween is paganistic. Halloween is a Satan night. Halloween honors dead folks and not lie. Witches and witchcraft are practiced through the power of Halloween. Go home and bury your Halloween candy because all you're going to do with it is sweeten the devil up. Did you hear me? Now, I'm coming by your house. If I see you knock on your door and you come to, with some trick-or-treats. No trick-or-treating. No trick-or-treating. Do not take your kids out tomorrow night trick-or-treating. I do not want the kids in this church to grow up with paganistic ideas. I want them to grow up with Jesus only. It's only what you do for Christ will last. Please, for God's sake, do not involve our children in these paganistic and witchcraftic ideas that America puts into the midst of us and it don't do nothing but cost us a lot of money. October the 31st, it's called Halloween. That's tomorrow night. I thought it would be a good thing that I start Halloween off today with some quizzes. Got a couple of questions I want to start y'all Halloween off with. That's four of them to be exact. The first question is, this is a true or false. A king, a king of Israel went to a witch to speak with her the spirit of a dead person. Is that true or false? Very good. Saul consulted a witch of Eda to contact the prophet Samuel. You Bible students should know that. Number two, how many people can you name in the Bible recorded God using to raise others from the dead. How many do you know? How many? Five? One? You're six off. Seven. 
The answer is seven. Let me give them to you. Elijah raised the, so the widow's son. All right, that's one, right? God used Elisha to raise the Shumite woman's son. There was a man who was thrown in the, in the grave, and he was raised by Elisha. Jesus raised the widow's son, Jairus' daughter, and Lazarus. There's the three that Jesus raised. God used Peter to raise Dorcas from the dead. Paul raised Euthychus from the grave. He died after Paul bored him with a long message. He fell asleep. You want to read that sometimes, you can go to Act the 20th chapter, verse 9 through 12. What happened was Paul was preaching, and the man was in the, at, in the upper balcony. And Paul preached so long until the man fell asleep and fell out of the balcony and killed himself. And Paul ran back and threw himself over him and brought him back alive. He bored him to death. So I'm not going to preach long because I don't want none of y'all to get out of here while I'm up here. Praise the Lord. Now, the next third one, the man possessed so many demons that he called them the Legion. Where did he live? Anybody know where he lived? The Legion lived? He was possessed with so many demons they called him the Legion. Where did he live? In the graveyard. Thanks, Deke. Praise the Lord. Amen. This last one is true or false. Jesus tells a parable about the haunted house. Is it true or false? Jesus told a parable about the haunted house. Is it true or false? True. True. You'll find it in Matthew, the 12th chapter, verse 25 through 29. You can find it also in Mark, the third chapter. Verse 23 through 20. And Luke even talked about it in the 11th chapter, verse 17 through verse 23. I want to talk to you this morning a little bit from the 11th chapter of the book of Luke. Praise the Lord. And we're going to cover verse 14 through, 4, through 28. I want to talk about the haunted house. The haunted house. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I guess you just got through talking that you didn't believe. I don't. But I'm going to talk about the haunted house. Huh? The haunted house. Let's start at verse 14. And he had casted out devils. And it was dumb. And it came to pass when the devil was gone out of the dumb spoke. And the people wondered. But some of them said. He casted out devils through Belzeba, whom has been known to be the devil. Sit down, y'all. Bless you. And he casted out devils. Listen to this one here. This is a good one here. Through Belzeba, the chief of the devil. But and others attempted him, sought and taught him, saying, seeing signs from heaven. But, but he knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided. Listen to me this morning. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against the house falls. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say that I casted out devils through Belzeba, and if I by Belzeba casted out devils, by whom do, you son, do your son cast him out? Therefore shall they be the judge. You cannot cast out devil. 
What happened here was, if you read the story of Belzeba, Bel is demonite. It's Satanite. And this man was named, and he was called the spirit of evil. But Jesus did not cast out devils through him, but he casted out him through the power of God. The devil, Belzeba, that was in them is what Jesus casted out. They misconstrued it and accused Jesus of being practicing witchcraft. And Jesus did not practice witchcraft. And don't you let nobody ever tell you that. He casted out demons through the power of God. But he named them and labeled them as to who they were. So that the people could know exactly who he was casting out. Are y'all with me thus far? Pray the Lord. If, 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 and listen to it. Verse, verse 18. If Satan also be divided against himself, Belzebub being the devil, Satan being the devil, pray, if he be divided against himself, how shall the kingdom stand? He wanted to show them that even though they were practicing through, under the laws of Belzebub, that he could be torn down and destroyed and taken out of their lives. Because as you read a little further, there was a devil in the house. And Jesus casted him out. And they cleaned the house up. After they cleaned the house up, the devil went and couldn't find nobody to get into. He searched all through the community and couldn't find nobody to get into. What did he do? He went back to where he come from. When he got back to the house where he come from, it was clean. So he couldn't operate. What did he do? He went out and got seven more devils. That's what the word says. He went out and got seven more devils stronger than the people that cleaned up the house. How, how many times in your life have you gone to God and prayed and asked the Lord to fix things for you? And the Lord will fix it for you. And when the devil comes back, he himself is too weak, but he go out and get his whole family. He go out and get his whole family and come back to antagonize you. And he will take over if you let him. If you start trying to think that you got power to do something, the devil will take over your house and destroy whatever you got. But whatever you do, if you do it in the name of Jesus, the Bible says in the book of Galatians, for we have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When the devil come into your house to try to take over, when he go out and summon seven or eight, ten spirits, I don't care if you summon ten thousand spirits, you cannot conquer because God is too great for the devil to conquer. And one thing I want to share with you this morning, this sermon is going to be short. One thing I want to share with you and I want to take back with you, the devil can't do nothing to you unless you let him. Whatever happened to you is because you have allowed the devil to come into your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Whether you know it or not, your house is being haunted daily. It's being haunted by your children, being haunted by your desire. Y'all need to stop letting your children sit home all day when they come home from school and watch television. They don't watch nothing religiously. They don't do nothing but watch pornography and all these other garbage that they got on television. That's a haunted house. That television become haunted in your house because it destroyed the image of God in your house. You need a God-fearing house, God-fearing children. You need children that will be obedient. They ain't going to obey you if they watch too much junk on television of disobedience. 
Now, you can sit there and look at me like I'm crazy if you think I am. But go ahead. I'm trying to get you to understand that it's time for your house to be cleaned up. It's time for your life to be straightened out. It's time for you to get things together because it's getting later than you think. God wants us to be his and not the devil. He wants us to serve him and not pretend. We come to church, sit, won't speak to one another. Ain't nothing but the devil keeping us from talking to one another. The church has become a haunted house too. Because we practice everything. Somebody want to put something on somebody to get something off of somebody. Ain't nothing on you but the devil and you let it get on you because that's what you allowed. Satan can't do nothing to you unless you allow him to. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Keep on talking about the devil made you do this. And the devil, devil ain't made you do nothing. You did it because you wanted to, and then you want to blame the devil for it. The time has come when the people of God must find themselves in the fellowship of truth and delight in the spirit of God so when we come to church, you can get some out of church. You all not to go to church to just to nod. You all not to go to church just to sing. But there ought to be a message coming from everybody. I stopped by this Lamont and child of God. You got a message for somebody. Because all of us are messengers of God. When we receive his Holy Spirit, when we've been born again, you can act and you can do something. But we sit with weakness. We sit denying ourselves of the opportunity. God will speak to our heart and our mind and tell us something to do, and we won't do it because they won't lack it. Who cares whether they lack it or not? Huh? Who cares whether they lack it or not? As long as you speak truth, as long as you speak the power of God in the life of people, they must listen. They will obey. They may get angry because you're telling the truth. But when they walk away and think about it, they'll realize what you just said. There is a blessing in speaking truth. There is a blessing in honoring God and not man. All of this stuff that we got in our house called uh, 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 keepers of whatever, we need to get rid of it. These horseshoes over our doorposts and, 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 and graveyard dust in the house and going out in the graveyard and collecting dust to try to get rid of somebody. I remember when I first started preaching, there was a woman that was a member of this church over on Mac Avenue in Concord. She came to me one day and she said, Pastor, would you do something for me? I said, darling, what is it? She says, well, Pastor, I have to confess I have a young boyfriend, and, and he left. I said, you had a what? I had a young boyfriend, and he left. I said, why did he leave? She said, well, my husband died and left me close to $50,000. And now I'm broke. And he left. And I want him back. I said, you want to get him back? She said, God glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, get you another $50,000. That's exactly what I told her. Get you another $50,000 and you can get him back. And the woman had everything in the house. She was burning incense, burning candles. She had uh, 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 horseshoes all over, rabbit feet in her pocketbook, on a, on a, on a, on a keychain, had a rabbit foot on a keychain. Praise the Lord. I said, first of all, you need to get rid of that rabbit foot on your keychain because it didn't bring the rabbit no good luck. What makes you think it's going to bring you some good luck? The poor rabbit is dead because you, and you're running around with his feet. You need to get something that is alive. You need to get you some Jesus. Go ahead and get you some Jesus. He's alive. Jesus is alive and able to deliver you. I told y'all I wasn't going to preach long. 
but go home and get rid of your junk. Keep it out of the hands of these children. Because I don't want them growing up in the midst of junk. But began to teach them that Christ is the answer. Because the Bible says in the book of Acts that there's none other name. The Pharisees and Sadducees, they were questioning Peter and the others because they were able to cast out devils, because they were able to heal people. And they asked him, by what authority do you do this? And Peter looked at him and said, there's none other name. Oh, y'all don't hear me? Whereby that man can be saved, but by the name Jesus. And I stopped by this morning to tell you that whatever you need, God got it. He's got everything that you need. If you're hungry, he'll feed you. If you're outdoors, he'll shelter you. If you're sick, he'll heal your body. If you're down and out, he'll pick you up. Uh, establish your going this morning. You ought to turn away from all this witchcraft. Turn away from suit sales. Uh, Turn away from demon possessors. Uh, turn away from diviators. Uh, and turn to Jesus. Uh, he able. Uh, I know he will. Uh, I know he'll make a way out of no way for you. Trust in the Lord. Uh, and don't lean on your own understanding. Uh, go ahead and tell somebody. Uh, I know a man uh, who died on a Friday, got up early Sunday morning with all power, with all power in his hand. I'm talking about Jesus. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Ain't God He's all right? Hallelujah. The haunted house. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the man of God. Amen. Who poured out of his soul on this morning that we may be fed. Amen. It's, it's not a, now that I'm walking this walk, it's not an easy task. Amen. To pour out weekly. Amen. To the people of God. Amen. Some of y'all, y'all make it hard to pour out to y'all too because y'all just sit there look like, hurry up, saint, and get done. <laughs> Amen. But we thank God for our pastor. Amen. We thank God that 78 years ago, God placed this man. God bless you. We hope you have enjoyed watching us today. We hope that we've been an inspiration to you and your family and friends. You may call us for prayer at area code 313 at 865-6156, telephone number. Praise the Lord. We are located, again, as I said, at 12375 Woodward Avenue. Our service is each Sunday morning at 1130. Praise the Lord. Bible study each Wednesday night at 630. We invite everyone to come out and be a part of all of our services right here. Remember, God loves you. Jesus loves you. And so do I. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, 
Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. What's going on, y'all? It's Mr. Bell. Some know me as Anton Quarboy Bell. Others know me as Elder Anton Bell. I am co-CEO of Bell Global Network, VGN TV 2090. And I want to invite you right now to get your own broadcast. Calling all ministers, all politicians, all business owners. Get your own broadcast right now, starting at $99. And if you have an idea for a TV show, we can bring your idea to reality. We have packages available that include production and facilities. Also, we have advertising packages starting at little $25. So don't hesitate. Give us a call at 313-355-7877. Once again, that's 313-355-7877 to make an appointment today. You never ever let me down and when I'm sinking and sin, you never ever let me drown. You're my life, girl, my security. You took my insecurities to put me in the lion's den and took out all the fear of me and gave me a limit to undeniable faith. In your arms, I am safe and for that I give you praise. Hi everybody, I'm telling you everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine AG and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network. 